Uh, so my name is Kit, and uh, I have been working in Yahoo for a long time, and actually that just passed the uh, 19 years mark. And uh, currently I'm a software architect in the Edge and the CDN group for Yahoo. And uh, I'm also a volunteer in the uh, OSPO, the uh, open source program office uh, for Yahoo as well. So I enjoy very much a lot of the OSPO's related sessions uh, in this conference and learn quite a lot on how to run my own organizations uh, back home. And uh, I've been a long time uh, committed for the Apache traffic server, and uh, which John actually talks a little bit about when he's talking about uh, the H3 for that. And uh, my specialty is really related to the uh, plugins, uh, especially the Lua and the WebAssembly plugins, which we'll spend a lot of time talk to talk about. Uh, in this section, we are mostly going to talk about um, WebAssembly and ATS, and what we want to really bring, bring home the message is that it is a good framework uh, if you want to uh, try to build some functionalities uh, for your edge. So. Um, I want to try to give some idea to people who might not be well familiar with the Apache traffic server. And so uh, how we are using it uh, in Yahoo, right? So in Yahoo, we have a lot of web properties like sports, mail, finance, or homepage, and they all have their own application servers to actually serve those applications. Uh, but the user request does not directly go to those application server. Rather, the user request will actually reach a layer of uh, edge server that is uh, what we are using ATS to serve it. And the ATS will proxy the request to those application server instead. So why are we doing that, right? The, the reason is that uh, we can actually uh, uh, do a lot of uh, centralized functionalities uh, in the ATS layers. For example, uh, we provide like DDoS protections or web, uh, web application firewall. Um, uh, in Europe, they have the GDPR, so we need to have uh, privacy controls. So we need to make sure that we have the user consent and then the user consent information is captured in some uh, cookies. So the ATS layer is actually also responsible for doing uh, cookie issuance as well as uh, cookie validation as well too. Um, other really common things is like uh, it supports uh, routing, uh, doing redirects, and uh, as uh, you guys uh, have heard a little bit in the previous sessions, ATS is a caching proxy server. So we also use the ATS as a way of uh, caching the uh, um, like really static contents, uh, such as your images, your JavaScript, and CSS for your site. And so it's all stay at the edge layer instead of always going back to the application layers to get it. So that's quite a lot of things you can do uh, with ATS. So we need. ATS to be really, really powerful in terms of supporting uh, uh, a programmability, or uh, we, we, should, we need to have it have a really good way to extend the functionality of ATS. So luckily, ATS is really good in that manner. And you can actually use C++ to build uh, some plugins. And the plugins can be able to actually tap into uh, the various different uh, uh, lifecycle events of the handling of your HTTP request and the response. Uh, between the clients and the ATS, and as well as between the ATS and the origins for that. So um, that's good. You can like build all the things I just talked about uh, using C, right? But we think that's a, quite a, a big, steep learning curve. So over the years, uh, there's various different developments to try to uh, 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 bridge the gaps of, of this learning curve uh, that we have, right? So uh, people actually have been using the, the C++ plugin system to build other plugin. And those are actually domain-specific language plugin, meaning that uh, basically you have uh, configuration files of some directives. And then uh, you have the plugin to able to interpret those configuration files and do the corresponding things to alter the behavior of your HTTP um, request and response handling for that. But that's actually very much um, still you'd have a, a, a big learning curve. You have to learn all those different directives. And all this different domain-specific language is not Turing complete. So there's a, a lack of expressiveness uh, um, uh, with them. And uh, it's actually hard to expand on them too, because if I have new functionalities in ATS, I have to like recode all this plugin uh, to expose those functionalities accordingly. So um, 
at the very last, we actually settled into the last part, which is uh, we are using the Lua plugin. Basically, we write a plugin that can text in a Lua script, and then the Lua script will have the information about how to make uh, different changes to your HTTP uh, request and response handling. And it is so much easier to learn uh, uh, a scripting language like Lua. Uh, than all the things that we have done before as well too. And, and recently we have uh, been playing a lot with uh, Copilot and we find that it is just really, really awesome. Uh, you have basically, if you have a Visual Studio code with the Copilot on, uh, you type in the enough prompts and saying that, hey, uh, generate a Lua function for me uh, to uh, fetch a request header from ATS and boom, uh, the Copilot will actually give you all the right um, uh, code that you can use right away for that. So that's a really nice surprise because like, uh, apparently the codex has indexed enough of our <laughs> example uh, to know how to write code properly uh, in Lua for ATS for that. So that's very good. Um, also, uh, we use a Lua JIT as the underlying engines uh, to run the Lua script. So the Lua JIT has this thing called the FFI, uh, Foreign Function Interface, basically allowing your Lua script to call in any of the uh, function that you expose in your uh, share library. So if you have a share library for like exposing function to say um, uh, doing a base64 encoding or doing some encryptions, and, and those are like exposed as functions through the share library, uh, your uh, Lua script can actually call those functions uh, directly for that. So we are really happy with uh, the Lua um, ecosystems uh, uh, for the ATS. Uh, but one of the things we really think about uh, for the long-term future is the popularity. So uh, um, Lua is actually quite popular in the old days when you can do like uh, some scripting changes on your, your world, world of Warcraft games. And uh, before PyTorch, uh, actually it's really big for uh, doing uh, AI-related uh, 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 programming as well too. But I think PyTorch kind of killed us in that manner. So um, like as time goes on and on, uh, we think that Lua is actually losing some popularity. So we are thinking of that, um, uh, how to actually um, go forward in the futures, right? So what we did is we stumbled upon uh, this thing called the proxy VASM. And so we built a plugin uh, on top of that. So what's proxy VASM, right? So proxy VASM is actually a project that actually tries to provide a uh, support for WebAssembly uh, for proxies of uh, server. Uh, proxy soft, uh, software. And so it's basically a set of uh, specifications. And so it comes with a library that actually implements the specifications and provides some easier integration with uh, proxy software. And the library also takes care of uh, integrating with uh, runtimes. So I'll, I'll explain a little bit later what runtime is when we go into later slides for that. And there's actually a very uh, 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 many uh, existing implementation. Uh, the most uh, well-known one is the Envoy. So basically, Envoy is another uh, proxy server that is actually very uh, actively being used uh, in the cloud environments. And uh, you can actually write um, uh, extension of the functionality for Envoy in WebAssembly. And they are using exactly the same uh, specification as well. Too. So the project also um, uh, provide SDK, which is actually needed to compile uh, your programs in various different programming language into WebAssembly modules that would be following the spec. So officially, they support C++ and Rust, but they have such a huge fan base that they have uh, various uh, different third-party uh, SDK supporting different programming language, such as um, uh, AssemblyScript, TinyGo, and uh, SIG, etc. for that. So uh, this is kind of like a high-level architecture of the ATS uh, WebAssembly plugin. So um, ATS being the proxy server, so the normally what it does is that uh, a request from the client will get proxy uh, to the origin. And a response from the origin will get proxy back uh, into the client for that. 
So what the plugin does is normally it sits in the middle of all these different uh, parts of the transaction or different uh, life cycle event of this transaction. And when certain events happen, they pass on that events and to say that, hey, uh, for this particular event, I want to um, invoke some functions that is defined in the uh, web assembly modules. And the runtime is actually used this, uh, in, for this purpose. Uh, uh, the runtime is the actual engine executing uh, the actual web assembly uh, binary code for that. So um, when you have certain lifecycle event, then uh, uh, if you have the corresponding function defined in the web assembly modules, then the plugin will basically go through the library to instruct the runtime to run that particular functions for that. And so when the function is getting run, and uh, if it needs to actually make some changes uh, to the proxy, you need to call some API. And that API is normally, uh, already we have uh, some registration to that. So it will basically be calling back the corresponding functions uh, that is provided by the ATS. Some of the functions, such as like uh, adding a request to a request header or, or removing a request from the request headers, et cetera, for that. So, that's basically uh, a high-level uh, architecture for that. And you can see when we talk about the proxy VASM being a specification, the one and two is actually uh, what being defined inside the specifications for that. So here's a very simple uh, example. It's kind of like a snippet. It's not the full things. Uh, but uh, later on when we are going through the reference sections, you can... Uh, see the, uh, the the real examples, and, and you can go through that yourself. But uh, what we really want to show is that, okay, this is a piece of Rust code, and we have like a HTTP context uh, implementations. And inside the implementations, you actually have a handler function, which is for the request header. What that really means is when the request comes in to the proxy server, uh, it, this function will be executed. And so we can do something very simple, like uh, the next set, uh, of code is to say I have a for loop to loop through all the existing request header and I print them out into my uh, uh, log files for that. And we can do something more specific to say, hey, uh, I want to uh, get a request header for my user agent and if it exists, I also want to print this out into uh, my uh, log for that. So on the right hand side is a little bit more um, complicated logics. So what we did is we tried to actually get a request header called token, and then we used the math library provided by Rust to say that hey, if it is a prime or not, if it is a prime number or not. If it is a prime number, then we will just uh, let the uh, proxying to go continuously. So the action continue means hey, the request coming in to the ATS, I'll just proxy it to the origins, let it go. Right? But if it is not a prime number, then we'll say, hey, uh, I don't like it, and uh, I don't want you to go through to the origins, and I'll actually fabricate my own response, which is a 403 response, uh, with some headers as well as a message saying that access is forbidden. And I send it back to the, origin, uh, send it back to the client instead. So this is a very simple way to verify, uh, to, to showcase various um, things you can do with the programmabilities provided here for that. So this is very simple, but we can look at something more like our real world use cases. So uh, a real world use cases here um, is um, WAF, which is, uh, it stands for Web Application Firewall. So um, that's an, a really cool project called uh, Carasa, and it is actually a uh, open source uh, WAF library implemented in Go. So what they are famous for is that they are actually making a, a new WAF library that is completely compatible uh, with the famous mod security uh, rule set language. Basically, if you have like um, a set of configurations files for your mod security, you can use it together with uh, Corasa and it will work in exactly the same way for that. So uh, the good people of the Corasa projects, they implement their things in Go and they take it one step further and they actually uh, uh, look into the proxy VASM uh, projects and compile their uh, whole projects into a proxy VASM modules. And so they can actually uh, turn the Envoy service into a web application firewall immediately by uh, doing that. 
So once we finish our implementation, we actually do the same thing. We can take that particular generated um, WebAssembly modules, and boom, uh, we will have ATS working uh, with the web application firewall um, um, right away. And um, in the reference section, you can see how I did it uh, in some um, uh, 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 some documentations for that, and and it's really just very much very simple. That you download the WebAssembly modules, and then you have the ATS turning on with the particular uh, um, uh, uh, plugin, the WebAssembly plugin, and uh, use that particular modules with that plugin, and you have a web application firewall in no time. So we have other really uh, uh, important use cases that we want to try out, uh, such as doing um, AI inference uh, at the edge levels. Uh, but we haven't get uh, too far into that. But these are some of the use cases that we really want to try that out uh, in the future as well, too. Oh, so as you can see, like with the um, WebAssembly and then the plugin that we are doing, so that's quite a lot of benefits. Uh, um, before, we only allows you to, like, uh, do your coding on ATS using either C++ or Lua. Now, like we have supports for many, many other languages uh, that is available to our, at our fingertips. And um, we also have uh, introduced a new way of uh, sharing functionalities with a uh, different uh, proxy server, meaning that uh, I can write some WebAssembly modules. It can work on Envoy as well as on ATS which is demonstrated by the, the, the Corasa projects that we just showed. And uh, also, like, um, the WebAssembly concept comes with uh, this kind of like a, a safety idea in which uh, uh, it is support through a sandbox approach uh, uh, by default. So what it means is that you can write a really bad programs and it will not be able to crash the ATS. And so the same cannot be said with the C++ plugin system. You can write a really bad code in your C++ coding, and then if you write this such uh, so badly, it can actually crash the ATS uh, uh, when you do a deployment for that. But with this kind of like a sandbox approach, um, you can write some really bad code uh, in in the way uh, of generating the WebAssembly modules, and it will not be crashing the ATS. Rather, it will just be considered as kind of like a, a error message. Uh, interpret by the uh, runtime engines that is actually executing code. So uh, that is um, a kind of a safety guarantees. So other things we are looking for is that um, we know like uh, it has a much more promising future than Lua uh, um, uh, because we have been seeing uh, uh, this as a, like a hot topics in in many like uh, discussion forums and things like that. And so we know a lot of more people are. Uh, like and company are spending time and resources and money into this technology. So we know this is only going to get better and better uh, as we speak for that. Um, but it's not all just rosy uh, here. There's uh, some problems as we are actually uh, trying to uh, make this happen. Is, um, the spec actually uh, support a lot of different other functionalities that ATS cannot support, uh, such as uh, getting and setting uh, trailer header and uh, getting and setting the metadata frame in the HTTP2 and actually being able to uh, provide uh, lifecycle handler support uh, for gRPC. So these are all actually in the actual uh, proxy VASM spec uh, uh, as of now. But ATS cannot support that. So we can't be able to support those stuff uh, in our implementation at this point. But there's also the other side, uh, the, on the flip side of the things, uh, ATS also has some functionalities that the uh, specification uh, didn't define, such as, for example, uh, caching, right? So um, ATS is a caching proxy server, while Envoy is not uh, by default a caching proxy server. So um, if I'm building some, uh, obviously I can actually have an implementation that have a support for the caching API, uh, but it will not be um, a nice thing uh, because it will be breaking the interoperabilities. So what happens is if I actually build a WebAssembly modules and uh, it works fine with 
uh, our ATS implementation, but it will basically a no ops uh, in the Envoy world. So that's another thing to consider as well too. So other things is um, our implementation is still pretty much uh, at the infancy stage, and we need to do a whole lot more testing to, in, especially at the part related to performance, and we are kind of identifying some resource contention bottleneck, and we are working on that. And also, we are imp uh, exploring a lot of different optimization techniques uh, that we hope to uh, get our performance up a little bit with this implementation. And uh, one of the really interesting uh, techniques is by choosing the right runtimes uh, for what we want to do for that. Um, so that goes to the next topic is, what actually is the runtimes? So as we said, right, so runtimes is the actual engines that is actually running your web uh, assembly binary code for that. And this is actually a really uh, big field and it's evolved really rapidly. There's many, many different vendors actually coming up with their own runtimes and they each have different uh, characteristics. Some runtimes are really just like an interpreter of the binary code. There are other runtimes that are smarter that would be doing uh, just-in-time compilations and compile uh, some parts of your code into machine codes uh, um, during the runtime for that. So uh, each of those runtimes has uh, their different characteristic for that. And also, they have different support for the two set. So some of the runtimes will allow you to do live debugging, while others will allow you to do some profiling for that too. So also, another part of the runtime is that the specification on uh, WebAssembly has many, many different extension proposal. And each of the runtime does not implement all of the proposal. They might be only uh, ex uh, uh, implementing a subset of the proposal. So different runtimes are famous for uh, supporting different proposal because they want to be concentrated on different use cases for that too. And obviously, different runtimes will have different performance characteristic too. And another really important thing is uh, related to the trust in um, your security for that. And so um, some projects, uh, they actually provided uh, their runtimes and they have a really like a mature model of how to handle the fund security issues. And if they have a vulnerability or weakness like a CVE or CWE, uh, they would be responsible on reporting that and they have a good process for that. While there are runtimes that are more amateurish and are kind of lagging behind in terms of how they can handle uh, uh, this kind of findings for that too. And um, so uh, what do we support? So we support uh, three different types of runtime. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And so uh, two of the runtimes that we support actually comes from a project called the Bytecode Co Alliance. So Bytecode Co Alliance uh, is actually a organization that is responsible for um, uh, promoting the use of WebAssembly in various different contexts for that. And so uh, uh, the really cool thing is they provided two runtimes that is of two completely different nature for that. So in the WAML, which is actually, I think, short for micro runtime, uh, the micro runtime is actually a really, really low footprint uh, uh, um, runtimes. It's written in C and is using a LLVM JIT uh, uh, for that manner. And it is uh, extremely configurable at the compile time. So you can even configure it to be just running as an interpreter uh, versus using uh, LLVM JIT as well too. And, uh, and when you compile it with different all um, configuration options, you can take out certain parts that you don't think you need, and then it can even further lower the memory footprint. So it's extremely powerful to be used uh, in our context as we, uh, as we find out, right? Uh, while the, on the other side, the other, pro the other runtime that is exposed uh, by the Bytecode Alliance project is the VAST time. Uh, uh, it's actually very, very popular in the um, open source world. Uh, the reason is that it is actually written completely in Rust. And so a lot of people are actually really uh, fond of the fact that this is a memory safe language. And so uh, in this world of uh, WebAssembly where uh, safety is actually promoted as an important manner. And so they really like want to have an end-to-end -end solution that is um, uh, pro uh, promoting safeties uh, in terms of the programming. So having a runtime completely written in Rust is actually um, um, a good point in the book for that. Uh, but 
as we find out, uh, it actually have a really high memory footprint as well too. All right. Um, another f uh, runtime we support is coming from a company called the Second State .io. Uh, The runtime is called the VAS Edge. Uh, this is also written in C++, and uh, we find that it has a really high memory footprint as well. Uh, but uh, they are really focused in actually supporting the AI inference uh, use cases, and the website contains tons and tons of examples of actually how to uh, use their runtimes to actually do uh, AI inferences uh, in various different uh, uh, um, uh, environments that they support for that. Uh, so there's also a very famous runtime called a V8, which is actually the one that you would be using when you are using your browser to run some uh, WebAssembly modules. Uh, we haven't been able to make it work on our ATS uh, WebAssembly plugin uh, because it is actually there's a lot of dependency for this one, and we are just like kind of uh, a work in progress for us to figure out all the way to to get it to compile in the right way for us to make it work. Uh, in the context for our proxy server. So um, as a summary, what we really want to say is um, we have something available now. It can uh, support quite a number of different languages. Uh, it can support quite a number of uh, different runtimes that is available in the market. We know we have a lot of things to do, especially in the performance improvement uh, uh, area. Uh, we want to test out some tooling support so that we would be able to do some uh, profiling and debugging for uh, our production purposes. Uh, we like to e explore more different use cases, especially in the field of uh, AI inferences. We know uh, there's more runtimes we want to support, such as uh, V8, and we are really looking forward. To it, uh, towards the future for that. So we know um, uh, WebAssembly, as I said, is a really hot topic, and I think uh, they have been promising this within the year, that they will have a new version that will be supporting something called the component model, which will actually make it uh, 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 even more um, a, a flexible technologies uh, uh, for people to use. And uh, other direction that we are looking into is that um, the, the proxy VASM is actually a specification. There's other competing specifications, such as uh, VASI HTTP, that also uh, expose a different type of uh, specifications uh, for uh, interacting with uh, requests and the response uh, of HTTP for that. And so we are also looking to see if, uh, uh, if this is actually getting more popular, maybe we should be supporting this specification instead of the proxy VASM uh, um, specification too. So, um, I talk a lot about various different technologies and things, and there's uh, a reference page here uh, pointing out to um, uh, most of the stuff that we have, uh, such as the ATS plugin and uh, the proxy VASM projects, uh, the Corasa projects that we talk about, and then we have some links to various different runtimes uh, that is available right now. And yes, am I running out of time? Yeah, I think I'm running out. Um, uh, any questions?